You'll start understanding it soon. Uh, explain this to me, won't you? It's all inside the code. Hi everyone, I'm Ronald Dolph, and I chose this question on polymorphism for episode one because it's literally one of the most common tech interview questions. And I've probably been asked about it at least three or four times in my career. If you wanna follow along with me, the project files are on my GitHub that you can find right over here. But for now, let's explain. The first step to understanding any concept, for me at least, is asking some basic questions about that concept. And VS Code, we can easily do this by going to the chat. And in our case, since we're going to be talking about polymorphism, I can start off with asking, what is polymorphism in programming? And it knew what I meant and answered. Now I'm going to ask it to explain it to me in a few different ways, because sometimes the first explanation might not be that clear. It might be a little too general. So I'm going to ask it to explain polymorphism to me in three different ways. And it's always good to see a variety of type of explanations of whatever you're trying to understand. And here are a few more. Polymorphism is like a person who can play multiple roles in a play and goes on to give a little bit more detail. So now I know I'm going to want to code some examples in C Sharp, so it would only make sense if I could ask it to show me some examples, preferably three examples of polymorphism in C Sharp. And there you go, a description along with the code sample. The first it said is about method overloading. The second, method overriding, which is really what most people think of, I think, when we're talking about polymorphism. And then there's also using interface implementation, which is another form of polymorphism. So now this is really good, and I'm kind of getting the hang of understanding what it is. But in my research phases, I always like to look at multiple resources. So I would even go ahead and ask it to share some links to examples online. And let's see if it gives us any. And it does for each of those types of polymorphism. So now at this point, I would take a break and think in terms of what examples of polymorphism I could think of based on some of the examples that I saw online in addition to what chat gave me as an example. And that's what we'll talk about next. In my example, I'm going to demonstrate overriding form of polymorphism, which, as we saw here, is when we allow a subclass to provide its own implementation. And what I have in front of us here is some starter files just to save us some time. And there's going to be four steps in this example. And in a nutshell, this program is going to calculate the salary of an employee versus the salary of a contractor. Employees don't get paid overtime, contractors do. So we're gonna have a method that's going to behave differently based on the object type it is working with, whether it is an employee or a contractor. So to do this, we're gonna have four steps. The first is to define a worker class as stated on line six and on line 11, the next step is to create our employee class and its calculations, followed by step three, which is doing the same thing for a contractor. And then the last step will be to write out the output. And throughout this exercise, I'm gonna show you the various tools within Visual Studio Code you could use to facilitate the process and also better understand the work that you're doing. So for our first step here, what I'm going to want to do is create the method stub to determine the weekly salary of either a contractor or an employee. And because I know I want it to be overwritten, I'm going to mention that this is a virtual method. And a lot of this code here, I'll just be pasting in just to save time from typing. But in this method, if nothing is being instantiated, I'm going to just write out to the console that the type of worker must be either a contractor or employee. So one of those objects need to be instantiated. If they're not, this is what's going to be written out. So if you're coding along, now this I wrote myself, so I, I understand it, but if like many developers, sometimes you use other resources to get parts of your code. So if you do, and you don't fully understand it, like let's say it was example code from some documentation, right? Well, within VS Code, what you can do is highlight your piece of code 
and then hit Command I if you're on a Mac. And as you can see here, the chat shows up right in your editor. You don't need to go to the left-hand side of your window. And it says, ask Copilot or type slash for command. So if I hit slash, I could see several commands that are available. And one of them is explain, explain how the selected code works. So then it now explains my highlighted code. So if I use the code from some documentation, didn't fully understand it, I could have Copilot explaining it to me which is pretty useful. It's like having a mentor right there on your side. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is for the employee class, I will override the determine weekly salary method. As you can see on line 18, I specify override. And starting on line 20, I specify what the salary will be, which is 40 hours times whatever wage is passed in. And on line 21, I'm writing out that this employee worked X amount of hours, which is specified by the weekly hours, but is paid for 40 hours and writes out their salary based on the calculation on line 20. Now we see that there's an error on line 18. Again, within Visual Studio Code, what I can do is highlight this code that has this error. I'll do Command I again. And when I do slash, we have an option for fix correct a problem in existing code. And when we select it and hit enter, it gives us a potential solution, which looks right to me because on line 16, what it does different is it inherits from worker. So I'll go ahead and accept that. So now we don't have any issues because we are inheriting from our base class worker. Now moving on to step three for our contractor. From previous lessons learned, I know I need to inherit from my worker base class. And once again, I'll create a method to determine the weekly salary that will override the base class. Except within this method, the salary is equal to the weekly hours that's passed in to the method times the wage. We'll write out the hours that the contractor worked and their total salaries, which will include overtime. Now you may have noticed as I've been coding, the formatting was done automatically each time I saved, but I could easily have used a shortcut to do that. And in fact, another thing that's great about chat is if we come over to the left-hand side and hit slash, we have a few more options than if we were in our text editor and hit command I. But one of these extra options here is VS Code. It allows you to ask questions about VS Code. So let's say there were some shortcuts that I didn't remember. For whatever reason, I forgot how to bring up the command palette. I can just ask it, what's the shortcut for the command palette? And it's not gonna search all of online. It knows to specifically look for content related to VS Code. And boom, there you have it. Command Shift P, and that brings it up. VS Code has so many features, it's really hard to just remember everything. And so it's nice to know that you could just quickly ask a prompt, a specific question about it, and it could show you how to do it. Now our last step here is to populate our main method. And the scenario that we'll give it is the hours will be 55 and the wage will be $70 an hour. And what we're going to do is define a worker variable named person, and that will equal a new employee. So we're instantiating an employee. And with person, we're going to invoke our determined weekly salary and pass in our hour and wage. So since I'm invoking an employee, it should know to use the method that is starting on line 18. So when we run it, Let's see the results. This employee worked 55 hours, but got paid for 40 at $70 an hour, so they only got $2,800. If we had done it with a contractor, the behavior of the method should change polymorphically. And now we see a contractor got paid a lot more, and I'm sure is much happier. And if we didn't specify either, and just set it to worker, ran it, if you recall, our base class will tell us that the worker type must be either contractor or employee. 
So things seem to work, but what's really a good practice to thoroughly understand how your code is working is to create test cases for it. And if you can understand the test cases, it helps comprehending the code also. So if we go to chat, I can come up here and just clear everything that we have in the window. And if I highlight all the code that I'd like to have reference when creating tests, and then I come over here, I hit the slash command and choose tests. As you can see, it says it'll generate unit tests for the selected code. So let's hit enter and see how it would look like. And you have a good starting point with some generated tests, all within a few seconds. Now, something else that's important I'd like to show is you'll notice that I have some of these comments here. If I remove this and want some more detailed comments, I can highlight my class or my method. And then when I hit Command I and slash, I do have an option for adding documentation comments. And when I hit enter, I get an option to either accept or discard this documentation. If I hit accept, this is how it looks. To recap, we learned there were three common forms of polymorphism method overloading, overriding, interface implementation, but we demonstrated overriding, which is essentially when the behavior of a method like our determine weekly salary changes based on an object type invoking it like our contractor or employee object. When the object was an employee, calculations excluded over time, but when it was a contractor, it polymorphically changed to include over time. All this was done in four steps by setting up our base worker class, inheriting from worker to create an employee class and its calculation, inheriting from worker to create a contractor class and its calculation, and executing some examples to the console. And to help us with all this, we use some of these features within VS Code. So there you have it, polymorphism explained. How would you explain the concept of polymorphism? If you think you have an interesting twist, go ahead and make a video or blog, and most importantly, upload your project files to GitHub and share the links in the comments. The ones that get the most likes, I'll pin it to the top. Thanks again for joining, and don't forget to check out our other videos in this series.